So we're gonna do another review real quick. Okay, so we need cruciferous vegetables. We need red, orange, and yellow vegetables. We need, um, let's see, we need uh, water, pure water especially, because the, the sugar water, you know, uh, you could be getting the fuel from like the fruits and vegetables you eat. You don't necessarily have to drink any type of sugar water. You know, it can be used as fuel, but it does not have to be used as fuel. But you definitely need cleaner water, which is you know, water to clean your body, clean the insides of your body, which is very strictly pure water. Okay, um, there's actually the stuff that you can put into pure water that will uh, aid in the cleaning of the inside of your body, such as golden seal. Uh, there's even other stuff like diatomaceous earth. Um, you know, and they, they serve different purposes, like diatomaceous earth is real good at cleaning your intestinal, intestinal tract, whereas golden seal is real good at cleaning your bladder and uh, assists in cleaning like your pancreas and your liver and your kidney. Um, whereas um, diatomaceous earth isn't so good at cleaning all that stuff. Um, okay, so uh, the other, okay, complementary proteins, so we need um, we need sources of protein that have complementary uh, ratios of the various amino acids that there are. Um, think red art. Oh yeah, probiotic yogurt. Okay, which is a good source of vitamin B12. Uh, vitamin B12 uh, comes pretty strictly from microorganisms and probiotic yogurt it has uh, biology in it bacteria particularly acidophilus as an example uh, lactobacillus casei is another uh, that is in some probiotic yogurts and uh, the um, the probiotic yogurt is a source of biology bacteria that assist in the digestive process. And without the probiotic yogurt, without the bacteria in your intestine, which some people, they wind up stripped of that bacteria in their intestine because they get put on antibiotics for too long. And um, you know, other people, they might consume like too much of really strong alcohol or something like that, and that might strip their intestine of the probiotic uh, bacteria. So, that's another thing that is absolutely critical for human health regarding nutrition is probiotic, uh, probiotic yogurt. And I think, okay, so probiotic yogurt, clean water, complementary amino acids or complementary, complementary proteins. You know, consisting of all the amino acids. Red, orange, and yellow veggies, cruciferous veggies, leafy green vegetables, uh, especially spinach, because spinach is one of the most nutrient-dense plants. And um, it's a good source of omega-3, and omega-3 is a necessary, um, it's a necessary oil uh, that it helps to regulate your metabolism. You know, they, you absolutely need omega-3 oil and uh, hugely it has been stripped from the U.S. diet. You know, there's, uh, there's not very many foods on the store shelves that have much omega-3 and people don't eat much of the leafy greens to get enough of the omega-3 and you know, it is absolutely necessary for human health so um let's see the uh, omega-6 is another uh nutrient necessary or another uh, oil necessary for human health and um there's actually an ideal ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 which is one to three and um 
interestingly, cannabis, otherwise known as hemp, um, it has exactly this proportion of omega-3 to omega-6. Also, cannabis has the exact protein proportion necessary for humans to build disease-fighting immunoglobins. So, uh, hemp milk, which you can order on Amazon.com, that's uh, highly recommended by me. It's a, it's a, it is a spectacular nutrient. It is the ideal human nutrient. Uh, so whole societies have survived famine based on a cannabis-only diet. So, um, I don't know, it cannot be understated uh, or it cannot be overstated how important cannabis is to human nutrition uh, and that it has been uh, stripped from the uh, from people's diets pretty much globally. Uh, it really is a travesty. It's a travesty of justice. It's an affront against um, it's an, an affront against humanity. It is a crime against humanity that cannabis has been uh, legislated against when it is so very important as a human nutrient. Uh, I think that's about it. I think that's about all the the uh, the food types that people absolutely have to eat for ideal health. And um, I guess I'll go over them one more time. Cruciferous vegetables, red, orange, and yellow vegetables, leafy green vegetables, complementary proteins, pure water, not sugar water. Sugar water you can drink, but it's fuel. It's not the cleaner that pure water is. And I think that's about it. Oh yeah, um, I don't know, as far as like omega-3, omega-6 and all that, you know, that's part of the leafy greens. And, um, uh, uh, really, uh, oh yeah, I almost forgot the human nutrient that require, or uh, that requires you eat seaweed is iodine, which I made a whole video just about iodine. And, um, I don't know, in short, iodine is the leading preventable cause or iodine deficiency so not having enough iodine is the leading preventable cause of mental retardation per the world health organization and when they say mental retardation they're not speaking about like down syndrome they're talking about just slow thinking so they're saying with that statement that people think slowly for no reason more than they do not consume enough iodine. And uh, iodine is a nutrient that uh, is available pretty strictly from seafood sources. So seaweed is uh, I don't know, it's pretty much the, the, only, um, it's the only vegetable source, you know, and there's all different types of seaweed, but uh, seaweed is the only vegetable source of, uh, or I don't know, actually I was reading recently that radishes are rich in iodine but I've also read that no vegetable is rich in iodine unless it's being grown in iodine rich soil so I don't know if there's some way that radishes generate iodine or if you know just radishes are being grown in iodine rich soil or what I don't know what the deal is with the radishes where they really are you know universally iodine rich or not but I do know that seaweed is iodine rich because it's all being grown in the ocean and uh, the ocean is uh, the only place on earth where iodine is in great abundance pretty much in all of the soil Iodine has been stripped from the soil, and uh, iodine is though in the oceans in tremendous abundance, and you can't really eat fish for iodine these days because of how contaminated the oceans have been with mercury by the coal-fired power plants putting a waft of mercury into the air which floats over the oceans gets rained into the oceans and then the mercury is there you know it, um, the fish swimming around uh, you know drinking uh, the water you know uh, bringing the water through their gills um, 
they uh, wind up taking in a huge dosage of mercury and uh, the fish that eat the little fish, they're taking in an even bigger dosage of mercury because not only are they filtering the mercury water through their gills, but they're also eating fish that are mercury contaminated that filtered water, mercury water through their gills. And uh, so, especially the long-lived predator fish, like uh, swordfish and tuna and shark, they are all very strong with mercury. They have a high mercury content. And so you absolutely cannot eat, especially the long-lived predator, predator fish, but just fish in general is, um, I don't know, is just too rich in mercury to uh, be messing with it as a food source. Um, I don't know, better about a source of that, which, um, you know, you might get into your diet by dripping it into some... Uh, into some water, like a, uh, a glass of water, is povidone iodine, which you can acquire on Amazon.com. You can get a whole gallon of it for like $25, $30 or so. Uh, if you go into a pharmacy and buy iodine, it'll cost you like $10 for a tiny little bottle. So, you know, you're really better to order it online and you'll get a lot more for, the, uh, for your dollar. And, um, you know, a gallon, it might last you like five years. Uh, if there's a nuclear war, you'll, you know, you'll be uh, the most popular person in your neighborhood for having all that iodine. Because uh, to keep your, or your thyroid full with iodine is how you prevent the damage of uh, radioactive iodine entering into your thyroid. Uh, which, you know, it'll, it'll cause cancers throughout your whole body if you don't have your thyroid full with iodine when you, I don't know, when the uh, nuclear blast goes off that there's all that nuclear radiation in the air. Um, I know iodine, it, it's very critical to protecting yourself in the event of nuclear fallout. Uh, um... Yeah, I don't know. I can't really think of anything else that's really important. Oh, yeah. <sighs> you know, the nutrition, it just gets more and more complicated. Organosulfurs. Okay, so we got cruciferous vegetables, red, orange, and yellow vegetables, um, complementary proteins, um, Pure water, not sugar water, uh, iodine, leafy greens, and organosulfurs. Now, organosulfurs are, um, they are like onion and garlic. Those are organosulfurs, and uh, they are critical to forming the soft tissues in your body uh, as like cartilage, um, let me see what else, uh, uh, beyond cartilage, ligaments, tendons, stuff like that. Uh, it's all very necessary um, or uh, I don't know, very uh, needful of organosulfurs in order to, to generate those tissues. And if you lack organosulfurs in your diet, that you don't bother to eat the organosulfurs, iodine and garlic, uh, especially, I can't really think of any other organosulfurs right off the top of my head, but um, if you lack those in your diet, then uh, you, you will suffer arthritis. You won't have the uh, the connective tissue that separates your bones, so your bones will be grinding off of each other. And um, you know, obviously, that's not good. So one more time, I'm going to go through this list of if you eat all of these foods, then you'll get all of the nutrients that you need, and uh, hopefully, you'll recognize why this list makes sense. Uh, peanuts, you know, that'd be one half of what's necessary for the, uh, what? Complementary proteins. Spinach, that's a what? It's a leafy green. Avocado. Um, 
avocado, it's, it's kind of a weird vegetable because uh, it contains stuff that uh, very few vegetables contain, like L-carnitine. Um, L-carnitine, uh, it's named L-carnitine, like uh, el carne asada, which is like, you know, that's to say, um, what is it? It's like a, a, a burrito with... Uh, with meat in it, but L-carnitine is something that is, uh, it's greatly associated with beef, but um, avocado is a very rare source of L-carnitine, which, um, it, you know, if you're a vegetarian and you don't eat avocado, then you will lack that in your diet and uh, your energy level will suffer for not uh, eating the avocado. Um, probiotic yogurt. Okay, which is good for what? The probiotics. Uh, probiotics. So probiotic yogurt. <laughs> um, oranges. Obviously, you know, it's uh, rich in vitamins, vitamin C especially. Uh, seaweed. The uh, reason you eat seaweed is for the iodine. Kidney beans. That's the legumes. That's the, uh, the opposite end of the spectrum regarding the complementary proteins walnuts it's another part of the complementary proteins and there's a difference between walnuts and peanuts and I forget exactly which one has more of what but um, they uh, they have different ratios of uh, calcium magnesium potassium those are all necessary for forming bones and for metabolizing energy in your muscles and all that and they have different ratios of those, so you want to eat a, a varied source of nuts. You don't want to eat just one type of nuts. You want to eat a varied source of nuts. That, that way, you get you know um, a good dose of you know all that stuff that's necessary and good. Uh, soybean oil that's going to be good for omega threes, omega sixes. Carrots, good source of vi vitamin A. Uh, tomato, it's got lycopene in it. Um, there's a bunch of other really good stuff in tomatoes. Turmeric. Um, turmeric is, um, I think it's a type of organosulfur also, but uh, it's listed here also as a good source of, oh, curcumin, which is, um, It is something that, that helps to remove heavy metals from your body. Um, pectins. It's another uh, thing that is in fruits that are necessary to remove heavy metals from your body. Mercury, for instance, or um, uranium, or you know, uh, lead, whatever type of heavy, heavy metals you need to remove from your body. Um, Organosulfurs, curcumins, and um, and pectin. Those are all critical to removing that stuff from your body. A uh, good source of pectin is apples. It's probably the strongest source of pectin. Uh, moving on, we got strawberry, uh, onion, organosulfur, broccoli, which is a um, it's a cruciferous vegetable and soybeans. Uh, soybeans are a whole protein. They have all of the amino acids in there. Although um, the, the soybeans that are being sold today, especially what's in the processed foods, are Roundup Ready soybeans. So they're genetically modified organisms and they are not as nutritious as a regular soybean. Um, and this goes for pretty much across the board that uh, the vegetables uh, in general, they are not as nutritious as they used to be. Um, I've seen a study that uh, purported that 50 years ago, vegetables were five times as nutritious. They had five times the amount of nutrients. Like if um, you want to get the same amount of nutrients today, that you would have gotten 50 years ago from one apple, you have to eat five apples. You know, so it's, um, it's not, uh, you know, it's not totally recommended that, uh, that you, you know, eat soybeans that are in processed food, you know, that are not labeled organic, you know, not being, 
uh, grown organically. If you're out there and you're consuming, um, you're consuming these vegetables that are being, uh, you know, um, that are being uh, produced by you know, these uh, multinational corporate conglomerates, um, you know, who, who they're basically the people that are that are operating the factory farms. Then, you know, it's uh, it's not gonna be, um, you know, it's not gonna be worth your while as far as nutrition. You know, it might fill your belly, but it's not gonna put all the nutrients into your body that that you need. And so, you're better off to get your own sprouter, grow some sprouts in your kitchen, and um, you know, get some heirloom seeds, which are seeds that uh, the seeds of the vegetables that you produce with the seeds will grow good vegetables. And you know, there's a bunch of um, you know, there's a bunch of different ways that you go about it. You can just buy local uh, from organic farmers. Uh, if you go to the grocery store, because that's your only source, you know, you don't know where the uh, locally grown organic vegetable people are, then, you know, buy organic there. But, um, you know, to, uh, you're not getting the nutrition that you need, you know, even if you're consuming this stuff, if it's being grown by Monsanto. You know, Monsanto, they are genetically modifying organisms uh, that is making these organisms less nutritious. So, you know, avoid Monsanto foods. Try to figure out what the Monsanto foods are that are in your grocery store. You know, shop from the outside aisles of the foods. You know, what requires refrigeration and um you know the, the the foods that will go bad if you don't you know bring the little bin of um strawberries or if you don't bring the bin of strawberries home and uh you know make a make a jam out of them that you know the week after they'll go bad or something you know uh shop those aisles and you know try to buy organic you know, do not buy the factory farm stuff and um I guess that's about it. You know, should I should I go over this list one more time? Cruciferous vegetables, uh, red, yellow, and green vegetables, or uh, red, yellow, and orange vegetables, leafy greens, iodine, organosulfur, curcumin. Um, oh yeah, legumes and uh, nuts, seeds, and grains. And um, probiotic yogurt. I think that's all of them. I don't know. Forgive me if I missed any. <laughs> all right.